Hello and welcome to another episode of Into the Scriptures. My name is Wesley Vital, and today we're going to talk about the Ninth Commandment, bearing false witness. Now, the reason why I want to go over this specifically is um, I'm starting to see it. I mean, I've always saw it quite a bit, um, but I'm starting to see it being more prominent, a lot more prominent in in God's people or the people who profess to be God's people. Because I know the world will show um, this multiple places. Um, we, so sadly, in our day and age, when we say bearing false witness, we think, oh, as long as we don't lie while we take a stand, uh, we'll be fine. But bearing false witness actually encompasses a lot of things. Uh, so that's what I want to cover. I want to reveal these things that Scripture shows so that way we're not caught bearing false witness because I mean, even I myself being guilty, we, we kind of do this on a daily basis, especially when we partake in watching what TV shows, uh, certain TV shows that uh, literally focuses on bearing false witness. So you're probably wondering, what show are you talking about? <laughs> I'll tell you in a second uh, after we go through some verses. But uh, the first place I want to talk about, uh, to go to, I mean, is uh, Exodus 20, verse 16. Now, in Exodus 20, verse 16, we're going to talk about the actual law. And it says, it says, thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shall not bear false witness. Now, most people just read this and they're like, oh, oh, there it is. I mean, as long as I don't, you know, I don't, I don't lie under oath. And I say, oh, this person did that when they actually didn't. Uh, and straight out, straight out live, and I'm fine. Well, here's the issue, right? When we look up the word witness, when we look up the word witness in uh, in Hebrew, because the word witness is H5707, which means a recorder or a testimony. So a witness is a recorder or a testimony, and it's a false recorder or a testimony. Now, what does false mean? Now, this is the big one. And this is one I don't think people understand. I, I, I think people overlook or don't don't honestly know because I didn't know. Honestly, I, I, this this comes from studying it. Um, I but I didn't know. Um, H eight two six H eight two six seven is the Hebrew uh, word in Strong's. And it actually means untruthful, a sham or without a cause deceit or a lie or vain or wrongfully so I, let's focus here on what it's you know saying this word means it means either untruthful it means something is just a sham or something without cause interesting without cause this is why this is very important because now when we go through some of these verses that we're going to read that it mentions that it mentions bearing false witnessing or false reports and stuff we're going to see that this isn't just you making some weird story up against someone this is including gossip this is including tail bearing um, this is including things without cause um, so let's let's get right into it. Uh, Exodus twenty three, Exodus twenty three, and we're gonna look at verse one. Let's start out verse one. Yeah, let, we're gonna do verse one. Now it says, "Thou shalt not raise a false report, but not thy hand with the wicked, to be an unrighteous witch, witness." So we know it's a sin to bear a false report, right? Now again, that false. That false is the same thing, you know. It's it's uh, desolate. Actually, no, it's desolating, evil, uh, uselessness, idolatry, untruthful, without cause, a lie. So again, so false is still referring, you know, without cause or something untruthful or something that is a sham. Or this is what's crazy. If you look up the word here, you also gossip. Look at this. Uh, when you look up the word report, H8088. Something heard. Just something heard. That is a sound or a rumor or gossip. So 
thou shalt not raise a untruthful or without cause or uh, um, or a sham gossip, right? Gossip or a lie or assumption or assumption. So just these words alone is telling us what false witnessing is encompassing. This verse itself, we shall not bear a false report. We shall not go around telling people. Now, this is what's crazy. If you heard a report from someone else, okay, and the, the scripture says you need two or three witnesses anyways, but if you receive a report from someone, should you be going to other people telling them about that report? That could be a false report, what you're spreading. Even though you didn't make it, you're still spreading a false report. You have no right to spread a report that you have not, I mean, in, in this case, if you're not a part of it, you shouldn't even know which we get into, but you should not in any way spread a report that you don't even know if it's real. Because in Scripture says we need to have two or three witnesses to establish something. Like, without that, you shouldn't be going around telling stories about people. In no way, sugar, even if you don't like the person, okay, even if they've done something to you, you shouldn't be going around saying it. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut, right? And they don't want to be carrying a false report, a report of lying or gossip, a report of, or, uh, of untruth or without cause, Okay, let's let's look at another one. Proverbs chapter six. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter six, and it is verse 19. A lot of people is actually familiar with this verse specifically. It says a false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among brethren. Now, this is talking about the abominations that Yahuwah God does not like, period. A false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among the brethren. brethren. So, I like how it says, soweth discord among the brethren. Because when you give false reports, right? If you give a false witness that speaketh lies, or if you give a false witness to a situation, which I, I really would like to reason with people here, and I hope all those who's listening, when we're talking about false witnessing too, is, when you just give your side of the story, it's kind of biased information. And that biased information is sharing your testimony, your witness <laughs> to the situation. So we have to be very careful because I'm not going to lie. We are prone. We are prone to exaggerate, to, uh, to dramatize. Like we should not be doing this. We should not be doing this. We can be caught giving false testimony, false witness or we can, without cause, without cause, and it sows discord. Now, why the sowing discord? Why do I, you know, why do why am I saying that? This is why. Because <clears throat> the word, right, the word sow discord among the brethren, the word discord itself in Hebrew is H4090, which is strife. Strife. And it's, look, and, and in this verse, it's put together. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord. Strife among brethren. It doesn't matter if you're doing it on purpose. You're still sowing strife when you're spreading information or a report about someone. Which, again, the report means gossip or assumption. Okay? Or lie. But you're spreading a report about someone. You're showing, sh sowing strife. You're showing uh, sowing strife. To the brethren, not just yourself and the person you're saying it about, but to the person you're sharing it, right? We've all been there. And listen, we are all able to accept. And if we're not being honest with ourselves, when we tell people about other people and share reports and information that we have not witnessed, especially we have not witnessed, but if we share reports that we have not confirmed at all, and we share reports because we just want to share it because we don't like a person, when we share that report, whoever we share it with, they now have tainted eyes towards someone else. I've been through it. I've been on both ends. We have to be honest with ourselves with that. With with that. That's that's primarily why I'm bringing this up is because we think that false witness is just hey, as long as I don't say any lie against my neighbor, uh, we'd be fine. No, it's more than that. It's more than just a lie. It's much more than just a lie. It's that lie encompasses so much more gossip, gossip, false assumptions, 
all these things encompass it and strife because it's so strife among the brethren. And God does not like this. Yahuwah says this in his word, Proverbs 6. These six things does Yahuwah hate. Yea, seven are they abomination unto God. And one of what's part of the seven? A false witness. And he that sows discord. That sows, sows discord. If two individuals, two brothers are, are, are having a, a, a situation, right? And one shares you information. You should not be going around telling other people, go, hey, you see those people? You know, because he said this. So that must be, that's wrong. That's wrong. It's bearing false witness. It's bearing false witness. We should not be showing disc- sowing discord. Now, check this out. Proverbs 14, verse 5. And sometimes what ends up happening is we hear stuff from someone else and we think it's 100% truth. But it could be a lie. We don't know. We should not be sharing information we heard from someone else unless we know it's true. Unless we have witness. Two or three witnesses let something be established. Look at this. Uh, Proverbs 14, verse 5. A faithful witness will not lie. But a false witness will utter lies. He will utter lies. We have to be careful. We have to be careful with what we do. Because we could be utterly, utter, utter, uttering a lie. We could be doing that. And we have to be careful. This is happening too much with gossip. And gossip is bad. It is bad. We are not doing what the Bible tells us. What's one of the fruits of the Spirit? Right? Well, one of the fruit of the Spirit is you assume in love. That's what it is. I don't know why I paused there. No one's actually here in the room with me, but you guys who's listening. But love, you assume in love. You uh, Love thinketh no evil. Love thinketh no evil. So we have to be careful. Now, I'm not saying, oh, no, no, we assume in love. If it doesn't look clear to us, the situation, we go, you know, maybe they didn't hear or maybe they didn't know or maybe that's how we need to be. Not I can't believe they did that. They should know better. No, no, no. Let's give benefit of the doubt. That's what scripture is telling us to do. Love thinketh no evil. That's not the first thing we should think about. How dare that per sometimes in situations, a lot of stuff is spread and gossiped around because the individual. Oh, this individual, he he. Uh, he got really zealous when we were doing a Bible study and, you know, it, it just looked horrible. But what, you know, love thinks no evil. What, what if he didn't know that hurt you in any way and you're sharing this information because you're hurt by it? You got to ask that person. Talk to that person. The Bible even says that you approach that person one on one. You don't go spread around. Then you're completely breaking what the, the, the commandments say. I know we did a study about rebuking and it, that's the, what we follow. We don't go, oh my gosh, you hurt me. Let me go tell everyone else my side of the story. No, that's not how it works. And the person who's listening, you're also as much as a fault when you don't say, listen, I'm not a part of this. I shouldn't even know this. This is tailbearing. That is tailbearing. It was crazy. There is actually a verse about tailbearing that we need to be careful about. That we need to be careful about. That's Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. 19, verse 16. It says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among the people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am Yahuwah, or the Lord. I love this. I love this. You know what a talebearer means? It means a scandal mongerer, a slanderer, carrying tales. Carrying tales to other people and be like, hey, I heard these two people did this. Can you believe that? Oh, my gosh. That is tailbearing. The Bible tells you thou shalt not go up and down tailbearing. That's all a part of this. And who knows the tale that you're telling is even true. If you only saw one side of it or someone revealed to you one side of it, that doesn't mean that's the complete truth. That's when now I can say the TV shows. The TV shows, the 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 uh, what is it called? Housewives of of Miami and Atlanta, and then and these other real reality shows that literally feed off of gossip, tell bearing, strife among each other, discord, false witness, telling people different reports of different sides. This is what the devil's doing, so that we become numb by it. 
And the ones listening who has nothing to do a part of it should tell the tail bearer to stop. Should tell her to stop. Now I'm saying this because I have been on both ends. I too have sinned by doing this. And I too have sinned by not telling the person to stop. But it's time for us to see what the word of God has so we stop. That we stop this, especially among the brethren. This should not be occurring among the brethren. The father is so clear in Proverbs chapter 6. This should not be happening. This should not be happening. But yet it happens. And yet it happens. And we are called. This was even more. This is how more important this is. This is Leviticus chapter 5. I have here Leviticus chapter 5. And we're going to go to verse 1. Okay, and if a soul sins and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness, whether he have seen or known of it, if he ha- if he do not utter it, then shall he bear his iniquity. So being a witness, a righteous witness will be a witness to the matter. To the matter of what? Whether he have seen or known whether he have seen or no, not whether he have seen or heard from someone else. No, 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 no. Some people like to claim the title. Oh, I'm just being a witness to the situation. No, you're not. You're not being a witness to the situation because it's only if you've seen something or you knew or you knew not. Oh, someone told me someone told me and this is what I know. No, 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 no. This is someone who is actual witness who was there or saw it or heard them the mat, subject matter particularly not you heard it from a tail bearer from another tail bearer from another tail bearer now don't be confused with me saying this and going oh my gosh we shouldn't talk to anyone no it's different to ask for advice you're going to someone go hey what does the bible bible say you know because i know two individuals they're just having an issue and what does the bible say about this specifically now when you're asking for advice you don't have to name names You don't have to name names, but people like naming names. You don't have to do that. You don't have to say, hey, so I was, you know, I just got involved because I just got involved because, um, you know, I didn't like this, what this person was doing, what that person was doing. And, you know, he did this and she did that or he did this and he did that or she did this and she did this. No, 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 no. Advice doesn't need names at all. We can just give an overview example of a scripture and then move on. That's it. You don't get in depth and start tell bearing other people's things. This this is all encompassing this commandment of bearing false witness, which is lying. In the end, it's still lying. Lying. Even if you're giving a report that you heard from someone else, you have to be careful because that report can be false. It can be really false. Aside from the tail bearing part, if you have nothing to do with the situation and all that information was given to you, not in an advice manner of, hey, I know an individual who did this. What do you think the Bible says? That individual needs to be reviewed as tail bearing. That is tail bearing. Look at this. Psalms 101. Psalms 101. And and the reason why I'm really hitting this is because now it's when I did this study is now clicking in my head so much more. And I'm going, why those who confess to be the followers of the Messiah? What are we doing? Look at this. Psalms 101 verse 5. Who's priv- privately slandering his neighbor? Him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. This is what's crazy. Slander here. Still talking about the same kind of slander, you know, to lick a, a defamation. <laughs> defamation to accuse to wag one's tongue (laughs) oh my gosh so this person this is also too if a tail bearer this is how you know it's a tall this is a tail bearer or someone who's bearing a false witness or someone who's just looking to slander when they come up to you privately and to speak private and hush hush because they don't want no one else to hear that is not right and especially if they're slandering they're accusing their brethren of something the father says, him, him will I cut off. This is so important for us to understand and keep in our mind. We cannot. This isn't a joke. This is what Proverbs, Proverbs chapter six says, an abomination. Abomination, because what does this do? It sows discord. 
it sows discord regardless of the fact when you start saying things to other people about other people it starts to paint a character picture in those other people's minds so when they finally meet the person or they know the person their attitude the way they treat them is completely different and off that's not right that's not right at all that's actually that's diabolically evil absolutely diabolically evil uh let's keep going here let's do let's do because i I really want to make sure this you know proverbs 11 i want to make sure this this hits home because as i'm continuing to read and do this i'm starting to see so much more on this issue uh proverbs 11 proverbs 11 verse 13 specifically verse 13 it says a talebearer revealeth secrets but he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter so this is important cuz this is a wise counsel this this is important to keep in mind that a talebearer will not keep secrets and secrets not referring to bad secrets but referring to someone just like i'm just going through you know for instance i'm giving an example um, I'm let's say I'm going through a hardship with with m- uh, my wife or another another individual says, hey, I'm having a hardship with my husband or I'm having a hardship with my wife. And they're telling you in confidence so that you can give them advice to what in scripture, advice to scripture, what they shall do. Not the information of, oh, my my husband does this, this and this and this. No, no, no. You cut them off and say, no, 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 no. I just What is the overall picture so I can give you advice? I don't need to know the little details of what your husband doesn't do or or what your wife does and doesn't do. Just what's your overall picture? Now, asking advice is good in that manner. But an individual who just absorbs those little secrets and then goes and tells everyone, that's a tell bearer. That is a false report. Or someone who's just trying to share report and slander around. with Regardless whether you mean it or you don't, you're slandering that individual. You are slandering them by spreading this, by spreading these little secrets. And what's crazy is, do you even know if those secrets are right or wrong, depending on how you heard it or how you saw it? What a real person should do, a real follower of the Messiah, a real Christian, someone who calls themselves a real Christian, what they really should do is do exactly what the Bible said. You go to that person and go, hey, I saw you do this. What's going on? Be a watchman. Be a watchman. If the person tries to come up to you and go, hey, uh, I heard that that she did this. Did you hear about that? Be like, no, but I, I don't want to know. You, you're you not telling anyone else, are you? You shouldn't be. The Bible says not to. That is what we should be doing. Not partaking in it. We should not be doing that at all. We should not allow this type of things. It's so important because this sows discord, strife among the brethren. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 20. <clears throat> and do verse let's do 29 now look at this he that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips we're not supposed to mess with these types of people these types of people are they're literally infecting the people of god they're infecting the world the world is doing that and now the world's infected this individual to now continue and infect others. Because this brings drama. It brings strife. It brings gossip. It brings slander. This is reports that are false. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. We don't want to partake in these things. We need to stay away from these. these, these uh, Rebuke and stay away from these individuals if they do not repent. But it is our call to be a watchman. Go, no, no, you should not be telling this type of stuff. Especially to me, I have nothing to do with the situation. Don't share with me this information. That is what we need to be saying. Especially if you're not a part of the situation, if you don't know, if you're not in it, why do I need to know? I don't. I don't. Unless it's an open public sin, open and public sin, yes. Open and public sin, the, the, the scripture reveals to declare so the person can repent because it's an open and public sin. But things that are happening happening behind closed doors are being dealt with properly. Why are we spreading information? It needs to be done through the word of God. If you have an issue with someone, you go up to that person individually. If you see something, you do not assume right away it's evil. You assume in love and investigate and go, hey, I saw this is what you did. What's going on? And don't partake in this tail-bearing stuff. 
don't partake because this is this is breaking the commandments this is breaking the ninth commandment of your it's false witness whether you're giving a false witness a lie or not whether you're just for slander or just saying something against someone whether if it's true or even if you're giving a a a, a dramatic or your side or your bias side that is false that is false and we are prone to do that and but we have to be careful we should not be giving biased information to people and people who receive biased information should not be going around telling other people they should literally just take it in one ear out the other and just give biblical advice and tell them don't share this don't share the whole story with me i shouldn't know but here's what the bible reveals go and do what you have to do that's it end it over don't partake in the tail bearing and then don't tell bear yourself Let's go to uh, Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. And we're going to do verse 18. Actually, is it 18? As a madman who casts fire by the arrows. And no, no, no. I'm sorry. It's uh, 28. Aha. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it. And a flattering mouth worketh ruin. And, you know, why I bring this up is because we notice a lot of the false witnessing, false reports, tail bearing, spreading slander, um, even evil sermonizing, evil sermonizing, which is spoken uh, in, uh, by Paul, the evil sermonizing. They all do something. They're fake. They give a lot of them. Sadly, I'm not saying everyone. Some people just generally are ignorant to the point where they don't know what they're doing. I was like that. I will now I know better. It's a different story, but I was like that. But a, a good majority, they flatter with your mouth, with their mouths, but they're actually working ruin. They're actually working ruin. It, 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 it's just that's why I'm bringing up this verse is that it's giving the description of how this lying tongue hateth those that are that those that are affected by it and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. And we see that a lot. The tail bearers do the flattery and say like, oh, you would never do that, would you? I mean, you're always a good person, but these people are not like that's not that's not right. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. Let's look up some more. Let's I, I really just want to fill up with more verses. Jeremiah chapter six. And uh, let's do six verse Actually, no, let's do Proverbs. Let's go back to Proverbs. And the reason why I'm going back to Proverbs on Proverbs 26, I wanted to read verse 20 because I think it's important. It says, where no, wo- ne- where no wood is, there's no fire. Right? So it's where no wood is, there's no fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bear, the strife cease- ceases. <sighs> so this is clear. This is really clear where there's no tail bearer, there's no strife going on among the brethren where there's no false reports or false witnesses. There's no strife going around around the brethren. There's no one trying to change your look towards another person. No one trying to spread lies. No one trying to spread tr- slander. No one trying to spread uh, reports that they didn't hear in the first place. This is very important for us to understand. And I love it because where tail bearers are, there's going to be strife. I don't care what you think. Oh, no, there's not going to be. No, there's going to be strife. So be careful. Be careful with what information is being shared and how it's being shared. So let's go now go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 6. And we're going to read verse 28. And it says, They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. This is important. Absolutely important. Look how it includes slanderers, right? Tail bearers, false reports, false witnesses, right? Without cause, something that's untruthful or a sham, right? This right here puts them all with revolters. Like they're they're just like revolters, those walking with slanders. We have to be careful not to surround ourselves with slanderers, with tail bearers. We should, if a tail bear and you rebuke them from it, because now you see what the word has to say, and say, you shouldn't be doing this. I, I don't want to take take part in it. And they don't want to. They continue. Or they say, you know what, I agree. But then they actually know it. They keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. It's not a person we walk with anymore or be close friends with. 
we continue to be there for them, continue to try to show them the word, to show them, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. We can always be there for that. But as far as walking side by side, we're on two different paths. One is the, you know, one to life and one one is death at that point. I'm not saying give up completely, but I'm saying keep walking, but be there open for them to help them, to point to them the right direction, to point to them for repentance and, and forgiveness. But don't partake with them. Don't walk with them together, shoulder and shoulder, shoulder, buddy up. You need to be doing your duty. You need to be doing your duty here. Let's keep going. Uh, oh, I do want to put up too. Uh, slanderers are uh, slanderers are corruptors. Like we read in this, so they're talking about they're all corruptors. Like someone who just slanders or spreads slanderous things are corruptors. And what's funny, the word slander here in Hebrew, it means talebearer directly or someone who carries tales. That's literally the the <laughs> the Hebrew word, a, a, a scoundrel monger, a traveling teller. So a traveling teller. So just like tail bearing, this is it. And they are corruptors. Okay, very because they will corrupt. They will share information, whether they heard it from someone else or they made something up or they're giving you bias information. They are corrupting your thoughts to that individual or to the situation. So we have to be very careful with that type of stuff. Again, when you're asking for advice, names don't have to be said. Names don't have to be said. Locations don't have to be given or specific locations don't have to be given. Just ask for scriptural advice from someone who is biblically there, you know, biblically sound or someone who, you know, definitely is a, a, a good report with God, you know, good report among the brethren uh, following God. It's one thing to be like, oh, I was just asking for advice. So you asked advice, a teenager and a little teenager who's who's, you know, still learning about certain things with, you know, elders around or or other other older individuals, women or men, regardless, more people who, you know, who teach the scriptures are there. But you decide to go spread your information to teenagers to ask for advice. That's weird. What type of how did you give it? So these types of things is like people. What I'm trying to get at here is that we have to be careful about tell bearing, a bearing false witness. We have to be careful we have to be careful. This is not a joke, especially if we heard information from someone else and we're spreading it. We don't know if that information is true. The mouth of two or three witnesses established that, not from one person, or and it could be biased. And we have to assume in love on both sides. We have to assume in love. We can't just pick a side and go, you, you know what, you're right, those people are evil, or you know what, those, you're right, that, that person is sinful. No, it's not how the Bible tells us to work. Sorry, this is not. And what's crazy is if you truly believe that person, if a, a, a something was given to an individual, uh, information was shared with an individual of like, hey, that person sinned and they did this. Can you believe that? Oh, man, yeah, they did. And then now you go and tell other people. You know, the Bible tells you if you you know hear that, you, you should go talk to the individual who is sinning directly. Directly talk to them and be like, hey, I heard this is what you're doing. I'm just wondering what's going on. The Bible tells you not to do that. And then when they share your story, now you got two different stories. Like, but hey, he denies it or he says, no, it didn't happen that way. Why the other one did. Now, who do you believe? No one. No one. Because you're not supposed to be a part of that situation. Just reveal what the word of God has to say. And that's it. Don't need to pry and don't need to share. Don't need to share. So let's go to another one. Uh, Proverbs 10. Now, I really like Proverbs 10 because Proverbs, Proverbs 10 has a lot of places. Uh, verse 18 specifically and it says he that hideth hatred with lying lips and he that uttereth a slander is a fool the bible calls these people a fool for doing it this is why when i read this stuff and then i'm like please god forgive me because i've also i've been on both sides i'm being honest i'm being on both sides here and we need to be honest with ourselves and go this is what the bible says and especially i'm calling i call myself a follower of the messiah a child of the Most High. I call myself a Christian, a true Christian. And yet here I am doing some of this stuff that he calls abomination, corruptors, calls him a fool. I, I mean, that that should be really clicking in people's heads right now. And you know what's funny? The word fool here. Fool here in Hebrew, H3684. 
uh, in the Strong's, is said stupid or silly. So a slander, a talebearer, false witness, false report, without cause, right? A sham. <laughs> They're stupid. They're fools. I was a fool. and <laughs> I was stupid. I should have never done what I've done in the past, right? But that's the gr- once we know we can come to the fa- come to the to the Father through the Messiah and say I'm sorry and ask for forgiveness and repent because we have we have the Messiah now. Um, let's look up. Uh, now I am going to say this, and I don't want people to take this the wrong way because I know there's the whole. Uh, I just do it. So <laughs> just being honest about it. Ten. Uh, uh, Titus chapter 2 and I'm going to start at verse 1 now the reason I'm bringing this up and a lot of people are probably going to stone me for this but I'm just bringing this up because we have to be honest with ourselves so I'm going to read it okay just don't stone me right away <laughs> but we but speak thou the things so we're going to 1 to 4 right? Titus 2 1 to 4 but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine that the aged men be sober grave temperate sound in faith and charity and patience the aged women likewise that that they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers not given to much wine teachers of good things verse 4 that they may teach the young women to be sober to love their husbands to love their children so b- before i continue I just want to notice how Paul is pointing out. Uh, oh, well, not Paul in the in the book here in Titus chapter two is being pointing out some of the weaknesses men and women have, and it just so happens women has a weak weakness to um, being false accusers. Um, and I'm I'm again this day and age me saying this about a stone. But I'm just being honest. Men have their downsides, their weaknesses. And I can't say our brains are 100% hot wired the same way. I, I even I think they uh, scientific. I'm, I'm not a scientist. But they say women use both sides of the brains, um, especially when in terms of thinking where men actually use majority of the time one side of the brain. Hence why men can focus in uh, on certain things specifically. Um, and women like to multitask. It's just weaknesses. It's just certain weaknesses. It, to me, it's foolish to say men and women are exactly, exactly biologically the same. It's just no. We all have different weaknesses and tendencies. Yes, we can all tear bell. Yes, we can all false, uh, be be false accusers. But they're just posting this because it just. I mean, even in my experience, it's just mostly women. Major more most of the time is women. Men do it too. Men do it too. But this happens mostly around the women's circle. Again. Again, don't 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 crucify me here. I'm just reading the word of God. So in Second Timothy chapter three verse six is where you connect the dots here, because it says, "For of this sort." Oh well, I, I'm going to read ahead. Um, it says, "Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Turn away from those who have a form of godliness. Doesn't mean they are godly. It is a form and denying." certain things it says verse six for of this sort are they which which creep into the house and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lusts now why am i bringing up silly women why is the silly women um being put up there now silly women isn't talking about they're stupid or anything like that no it's just little women uh, people who are a young, it's just talking about young women, women that are not, you know, learning. What exactly is turning them away? Well, one to five, right? We're going to read the one to five now. This know also that in the last days perilous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy, without natural affection. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, uh, incontentment, fierce, despisers of that is good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into the house and lead captive silly women or little women or young. 
So I'm not saying I'm not saying that everyone like for instance, I just want to clarify one more time, little women is just it, it's talking about someone who's just foolish, right? Someone who doesn't know. Foolish. They just don't know. That's what the root word comes from in Greek. Um, but what I'm saying here, why I'm bringing Titus chapter 2, verse 1 and 4, and Second Timothy, Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, is around, for instance, around the women's circle, this is more prominent for tail-bearing, gossiping, false accuser. Men do it too. But here's a, you know, a, a very good counsel in the book of Titus and in Timothy where they're specifically, you know, trying to say, be careful because women are prone to this. Now, men are too. I'm not saying they're not. We are. I'm a male. I know. We are. We all have this problem. We high-minded, heady, lovers of pleasure, false accusers. We are. We are, but there is a specific warning. And it just so happens, and we have to be honest with ourselves, that a lot of the women's circle, this happens. This does happen in the major, more times in the women's circle than men. Uh, men do it too, though. So, I'm not, so, again, don't stone me for that. I'm just bringing this up because we need to be careful. We need to be, especially the older women who know better, needs to really look out for the younger women, the, the, the foolish women who don't know. You really need to look out for it. We all need to do our part. All of us, because men encounter this, men do it, women do it, doesn't matter, sin is sin. Sin is sin. I'm just bringing up the women part so women who's listening can click and go, yeah, I really got to pay attention. And men's got to pay attention too, because we do it too if we don't watch out. We have to be careful with the tail bearing and bearing false witness. It is extremely important. This is the entire, the ninth commandment is encompassing all these things. All of these things. So again, the reason why I wanted to cover all this is it very important because the world is feeding everyone. Like for instance, and I brought up the the housewives of, I think is Miami and Atlanta or stuff like that. That's all huge in the the, the we, we, that's all catered catered to female too. That's what's crazy. It's catered catered specifically to female audiences. Uh, there is male audiences. Not gonna lie. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to say there isn't, but uh, it's catered to women. And that's that entire the entire show. And there's other other shows like, uh, well, man, uh, there's stuff, some stuff back in the day in TLC. I don't even watch that stuff. But in TLC, they had, you know, some, uh, 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 you know, some drama and stuff like that of 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 TV, like reality TV, where it's always spinning someone against someone, discord against discord, false accusation, uh, a slander, a false report, a sham, uh, sharing information you heard from someone else that was a lie from the beginning with or that was dramatized from the beginning with. The world is feeding this. God is telling us not to partake in it. And it's important that we understand it so that we don't bring this stuff into the house of God because this is what's happening in the body right now. People are separating, are dividing, are, being, are having discord with one another because of this. And we need to stop this according to the word of God. We need to say, no, don't tell me I'm not a part of this. That's how it needs to be. So if an individual <clears throat> shares with you information, tell them, no, I am not a part of it. Why? If you're asking for advice, you don't need to tell me names. You don't need to say stuff like that. Just if you're looking for advice, you know, the Bible says to approach that individual of whatever, whatever. Or tell bearing, you have to be careful. Be very, very careful. Sharing information, especially with people who's not a part of the situation. You should not be doing anything like that. And if it's a, a, a situation of sin, the Bible says you sh should be approaching that, other, that individual directly and going, hey, I heard this. I just want to know, are you okay? Um, what exactly? And that person can share with you because what you have is only one side. And the Bible says to, to establish a matter, you need two or three witnesses. This, this is not how it works. We don't go off of one person because we love that person. We're going to go off them because we have all, all of us, has stretched the truth on certain events. All of us have done it. I have done it. We've all done it. Stretch the truth just a little bit. That's a sin. Because you are not bearing a righteous witness. A witness will say exactly how it happened. If you do not give the exact way it happened, you are false witnessing. You are giving a false witness because you added a couple details. I don't care how little those details are. Those details 
whether subtle or not subtle, are there for a reason. And it's used to paint you as a saint and the other person as the evildoer. That's not how this works. And we have to be careful with all these things. We cannot do this. We need to be righteous witnesses. We need to be righteous witnesses. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Before we end here, I just want to go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Um, and the reason why Ezekiel chapter 3 is because I think it would be nice to read in verse 17 here. It talks about watchmen. And we're going to read till probably 21. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him no warning, nor speak to him or warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turns not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his own iniquity, but you have delivered your own soul. And when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because, he, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at your hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned, as thou hast delivered your soul. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because we need to correct these people in love, of course. I'm not saying go out there and go hit them up, you know, and be like, hey, what are you doing? You're doing evil. You're evil. How can you do that? You're sinful. You, you're going to die. No, 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 no. You should really, I mean, listen to the uh, How to Rebuke study that we did on this podcast. But, you approach in love. Consi the Bible says to consider yourself. Consider yourself before you talk to your other brother. Because guess what, man? We've all been there. We've all had our ups and downs. We need to approach it in that manner. And to think that I have no sin, that I'm going to be better than... No, we approach them because we don't want them to die. The Father calls us to repentance and forgiveness because He doesn't want us to suffer. That is the attitude we have. I don't want my brother to suffer. So let me talk to him. Let me reason with him. Let me. What about the word of God? Let me show him the word of God. And that's literally what we read in Ezekiel. To warn him so that he may live, not die. And if we don't warn him, and that's what's happening more today, is we're not warning. We're just going, ah, this is someone else's problem. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to get involved. You know, yeah, it's true. Don't get involved. But you should at least fix what you have now already been involved in, which is the tale bearing or false witnessing part. And be like, hey, you shouldn't be telling tales or carrying tales around. We shouldn't be slandering. Oh, it's not a slander. What I'm saying is true. No, but you're still telling other people. You shouldn't be doing that. It's slander. Slander is not necessarily a lie. So the, this is what's happening today. People just don't care, especially followers of God. They're just not caring right now. I don't understand what's going on. I'm, I'm sorry, kind of venting a little bit here. Um, it's just when I see the word of God saying certain things and I speak more for myself, like how can I overlook these things? How important it is for us to stand firm to what is true. Slant, stand firm to what is true. We have to be careful with the accusations. That's another one, too. Accusations is a whole nother one. And we need, we need to be righteous witnesses. And righteous witnesses is declaring what the word of God says. That's a righteous witness. Someone who does contrary to that is bearing false witness. Someone who takes uh, tales, whether if it's true or a lie, is still tell bearing to other people. Uh, slander necessarily isn't a lie. Slander is just slandering someone speaking badly about someone to other people who shouldn't even know even bearing witness to your side bias stories these are all false witnesses you need to give true witnesses and that's the point of the bearing false witness of the ten commandments the ninth commandment thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor if you truly loved your neighbor you wouldn't be slandering them 
You wouldn't be telling, oh, man, but they did this to me. You wouldn't be doing that to other people. You wouldn't be going to other people and going, yo, he did this to me. Can you believe that? Can you believe it? Can you imagine now his home, his house? I don't even think he follows God. I can't trust anything he says or she says. No, that's not. When we look at the commandments, we're supposed to see it as love thy God with all your heart and love thy neighbor. Every commandment is that way. So everything we read so far is love thy, is love thy God because you're obeying the commandments, showing a proper witness, being his true follower. Because we are a witness to the world. We are the light of the world, right? Well, the Messiah is the light of the world. We are also lights when we are in him. And that's bearing righteous witness. A witness is also giving a testimony, me walking out the word of God. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful. And that's the point of the study. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. And remember, not assume in, in, uh, in evil. Love assumes no evil. So actually, you know what? I said it before I close last verse. And I know I lied on this one. Uh, love's assu- uh, love. It says love thinketh. I'm going to look it up real quick. Thinketh no evil. I don't know how you spell the thinketh part. I think it's just T-H. No, it was T-H-E. Sorry. Um, if I can't find it. I give you all a mission to find it. Okay, there you go. Uh, first, <laughs> first Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse five, and it says, and I just I'm bringing this verse because I want to make sure when I say it, I have a verse. Doth not behave itself unseemly. This is talking about charity, which is love. Um, uh, yeah, love. Uh, if you look up the word in Greek, it's talking about love. Doth not behave itself unseemly. So love doesn't behave itself unseemly or, or unseemly. Okay, unseemly means uh, uncommon or unbecoming. Okay, which tail bearing is not becoming, it's unbecoming. And so it's not behaving unseemly, seeketh not her own. So love doesn't seek its own and is not easily provoked. Uh, it provoked. So we have to be careful. Some people are provoked so quick, so quick, especially in terms of tail bearing, they go tell people right away in slander. And it says, thinketh no evil think if no evil and i like the word think if because in greek it means uh, do, uh take inventory or estimates assumes so this is where the saying assume uh, uh assume in love comes from it comes from paul because the word thinketh here actually means to take inventory to estimate or assume so we shouldn't be assuming right away in evil so i mentioned that a couple times there's your verse so I pray this was a blessing, guys. Please study this out for yourselves. As I'm going, there's so many verses I didn't touch. Like usual, there's just too much. And this is where it comes in, where we need personal time to study and to prove all things for ourselves. So I hope this study was a blessing to you. This opened your mind to um, to study more on this topic. And, you know, feel free also to, to email, uh, email me um, or email uh, anywhere or into the scriptures.com go to the website you can email us there you can go to 4alc and email there as well um, you'll you'll get a response from from me or from uh, uh, Jadiel who's the director of 4alc I'm I'm also the co-director of 4alc and the host for into the scriptures um, there's material on 4alc.com it's 4alc.com and there's material material on into the scriptures.com Feel free to email, contact us on Facebook. Uh, Into the Scriptures has a Facebook. You can contact us there. Um, we also post on the fourth, uh, the 4ALC YouTube channel, which is 4th Angels Learning Center channel. Um, that's where the Into the Scriptures is posted there. If you comment there, we'll be there to talk. Um, but yeah, feel free. And, and again, uh, God bless and let this be a blessing to you. And go, go get in the Word yourself and study these things out because there's so much more we have to learn. God bless.